in the New Testament, when Jesus enters a room and says, peace be with you, we know he is really speaking Aramaic and saying shalom or the Aramaic equivalent. And then it is rendered in Greek as the gospel writers recount the event. How much of the New Testament can we think of this way? Well, I would say, if to be honest, we really don't know uh, if Jesus was speaking Aramaic. I mean, it it depends on, on who's in the room. <laughs> you know, if Jesus walked into a room of Hellenistic Jews or a room with a mixed composition, Jews and Gentiles, he may have spoken Greek. I mean, we, we just don't know for sure what the scene was at any given point. You know, who even if we have a scene in the Gospels, do we have a head count? You know, do we have an ethnicity count? Well, no. It, it's, sometimes we get more of an indication than others. But, I mean, Jesus is, is part of a multilingual culture. And in a multilingual culture like, you know, first century Judea, we can't really assume what anyone is saying at, at any given point is, is in this or that language. We can go with the odds, so to speak. So if Jesus walked in a room full of Jews from his hometown or part of Judea dominated by a Jewish presence, well, Aramaic's a pretty good bet. Um, but if the parameters change, well, it could have done something else. You know, incidentally, uh, Jesus, getting off into the Aramaic thing for a little bit here, Jesus isn't recorded as using Aramaic except in only a few places. There's Mark chapter 5, there's one in Mark 7. Uh, some of these are parallel in Matthew. There's one in Mark 15. There are people, you know, who who have studied this, Jer, uh, Jeremias, I always get his, I don't even know if it's Jeremias or Jeremiah, but I think it's Jeremias, a New Testament scholar uh, back in the 60s, 70s, uh, 80s. He had but roughly a couple dozen uh, Aramaic words uh, in, in the Gospels in total, so that isn't a whole lot. Uh, there are still scholars today who would suspect or argue that instead of Aramaic as being the native tongue uh, of Jesus, it might have been Mishnaic Hebrew. Um, that's possible. Uh, for those who are interested in this, um, I'm, I'm going to post a, a few articles on this. I've collected some, and um, I'll just I'll pick out a few here uh, from what I have. If, if you subscribe to the newsletter, again, you you'll be given a link in each each issue of the newsletter. At the bottom, there's a link to a protected folder where where I can put articles that aren't publicly accessible, uh, so that newsletter subscribers can at least you know read them. But there's one by, uh, I'm looking at a list here, one by Stanley Porter. Did Jesus ever teach in Greek? It's from Tyndale Bulletin in 1993. Now, what, what Porter argues in this is, yeah, he, he could have taught in Greek. He, Porter acknowledges this is kind of a, a minority view. Most other scholars would sort of give Jesus fluency in Aramaic or Mishnaic Hebrew, but Porter thinks he would have been trilingual. But, you know, he spends... 30 pages, you know, laying out his case that Jesus could have taught in Greek, too. There's one by Grintz, Hebrew as the spoken and written language in the last days of the Second Temple. Another by Emerton, the problem of vernacular Hebrew in the first century AD in the language of Jesus. So th these are going to get into Jesus being an Aramaic speaker, Mishnaic Hebrew speaker. Again, there. It's not unreasonable to think that Jesus could have been trilingual, and so we can't really assume much uh, about Jesus walks into a room and says, okay, you know, like which language he's using. You'd have to know about the context. If the context is like really, really, really distinctly Jewish, well, again, Aramaic could be a good bet, but he, you know, if we could time travel, we might have heard Jesus speak in, in Hebrew, you know, Mishnaic Hebrew. Um, we, we just, we don't know. So, I wouldn't base any sort of exegetical or theological conclusions necessarily on some of these assumptions. I think we need to try to think about all the possibilities, um, you know, when it comes to this. So it's really hard to uh, to kind of reimagine what, you know, not only what Jesus or, or anybody else would have been, you know, speaking or doing, but when it comes to literary output, you know, that, that's a whole different issue. So. I think it, it makes very little sense to have uh, much more than Matthew uh, and Mark, we'll say, two of the Gospels possibly written in Aramaic originally. Uh, you know, this, this whole discussion takes us into the Aramaic New Testament issue, so I might as well say something about that here. Um, there is no evidence that the Aramaic, no, no manuscript evidence that the New Testament, any portion of it, was written in Aramaic. Uh, 
There are some who argue for that. Again, Mark and Matthew usually become the target for that. Certainly Luke was not. Luke was a Gentile. He's writing to a Gentile. Why would he write in Aramaic? Paul's epistles are written to predominantly Gentile churches. Why would he write in Aramaic? Hey, I'm going to write you a letter, but I want half the congregation to not be able to read it. It doesn't make any sense. You know, John is much later. He lacks Hebraisms in, in many cases like Matthew. He has little to no literary dependence on Matthew and Mark. Again, if you're familiar with the synoptic uh, debate, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, you know who wrote first and who, the other two are dependent on that one. John is not in the synoptics for a reason. Most of the content in John is not in the other three. So he doesn't have a literary dependence on, on the synoptics. So, again, that, that would, would suggest, anyway, that even if Matthew or Mark were written in Aramaic originally, John doesn't really care. You know, he, he, he comes later. He's not interested in tracking on that material. So Aramaic doesn't really make much sense for, for John and what he writes. Uh, maybe the Targum, you know, maybe he, he might have used some Targums or been influenced by Targums, like in the word theology. In the beginning was the word. You know, we've talked about this a little bit on the podcast before in relationship to the two powers in heaven idea. Where does John get that? Well, he gets it from his Old Testament. And he may have been, you know, familiar with the Memra uh, material, Aramaic Targums of the Old Testament, where you have the second Yahweh figure, Memra, the word. But the, Memra is the Aramaic word for word where you have the word of God inserted into, into certain passages. He may have been familiar with that, so there may be an, an Aramaic influence there with John, but there, there's no reason to believe that, that the gospel or Revelation you know, were written in Aramaic. Revelation, in fact, is oriented to Asia Minor. Churches in the first few chapters, again, the, this is predominantly Gentile. It's, it's Gentile territory, predominantly Gentile churches. Why would you write in Aramaic? Even the general epistles that are aimed at Jews in the dispersion, well, where's the dispersion? It's out in the Gentile world. So you're, you're going you're gonna, to you're have letters. Yeah, they're, they're written to a Jewish audience, but chances are they're going to get passed around among groups of believers, many of whom are Gentiles. It, it just makes no sense to have an Aramaic New Testament is what I'm getting at. Again, maybe Matthew, maybe Mark, maybe an, an early gospel, something like that. But even if it makes sense for those you know, two books, we don't actually have any manuscript evidence for it. So I... I, I I'm I'm not really sure why in my own mind why why people I've met some people you know in in the course of being online that you know really really care and I think to an unusual degree about Jesus speaking in Aramaic and the Aramaic Aramaic being the language of the New Testament I, I really don't see what why what the concern is um, I think uh, he's this is a this is coming from curiosity, not some sort of ideology. But I've met people again who are in the latter camp, and it doesn't it just doesn't make any sense to have an Aramaic New Testament. So I don't think we need to get hung up on at least that part of the question.